Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain management of facial space infections. And the management of odontogenic infections of head and neck has several primary causes, such as medical support of the patient with special attention to protection of the uh, airway and uh, correcting host defense compromises where they exist, uh, and removal of source of infection. Surgical drainage of the infection with proper placement of drains, administration of correct antibiotics in appropriate doses, frequent re evaluation of a patient's progress toward resolution. This table shows the principle of management of odontogenic infections. The first primary goal is medical optimization of the patient. Medical optimization is a patient centered approach to correct underlying conditions such as dehydration malnutrition, host defense compromises, and poorly controlled medical conditions such as diabetes, uh, and also to give the safe, clinically effective, and cost-effective and affordable use of analgesics and antibiotics for patients if required. The second most important primary goal is airway protection. Uh, serious infections in the proximity of the upper airway may cause airway obstruction leading to respiratory insufficiency or uh, respiratory failure. When uh, patency of the upper airway cannot be maintained with uh, routine maneuvers, for example, head tilt, jaw thrust, uh, then immediate airway access and patency must be established surgically. Uh, typically, this is accomplished with a cricothyrotomy or tracheostomy. Continuous monitoring of the patient is mandatory in such conditions. Once the airway has been assessed and secured, uh, the surgical management of the source of infection is of crucial importance. Whether uh, it be a vestibular abscess, an odontogenic related maxillary sinusitis, or a deep facial neck space infection, the primary goal of therapy is elimination of the source of infection. Remember that the management of the airway, removal of the offending source of infection, and the decompression of the fluid collection that is incision and drainage are performed most appropriately in the operating room setting with general anesthesia, especially for complex odontogenic infections. If uh, the tooth is uh, extracted in uh, the presence of infection, uh, it will quickly resolve the infection. Uh, it will also reduce the morbidity of the infection. Examples are uh, decreased time out of work, uh, shortened or avoided hospitalization and reduced need for extra oral incision and drainage. Uh, it is a misconception that extraction of tooth in the presence of infection will lead to spread of severe infection and in such cases chances of hospitalization will be more. Uh, however, the case is reverse. If the tooth is not extracted in uh, infection, then the infection may become severe enough that it may cause hospital care and more aggressive surgery will be required. Furthermore, a patient with a severe odontogenic infections uh, who have already treated for some procedures such as root canal therapy, uh, such patients that ultimately uh, result in hospitalization uh, require shorter hospital stay and uh, fewer complications. It must be recognized that uh, many head and neck infections may be non-odontogenic in origin uh, and infections of head and neck may originate from other sources. Next is the surgical incision and drainage. In fact, uh, there should be a low threshold for drain placement even with an early onset infection uh, that is cellulitis phase because this may prevent the development of an abscess uh, and expedite resolution uh, of a cellulitis. Uh, for detail about uh, surgical incision and drainage, kindly watch our video about principle 4 that is treat infections surgically. Uh, surgical management of uh, facial space infections almost always requires a sufficient incision and aggressive exploration of the infected area with a hemostate. Uh, the length of the incision must be sufficient at least 10 to 15 mm and the depth uh, must be at uh, the depth at least through the uh, mucosal and submucosal tissue layer or skin and subcutaneous tissue. For adequate drainage and decompression of infected area, one or more drains are required 
is the anesthesia and drainage is extensive uh, procedure. Therefore, it should be done under general uh, anesthesia as pointed earlier. Uh, the surgeon must not wait for evidence of pus formation because the clinical experience and experimental evidence indicate that if surgical incision and drainage is done even when no abscess formation can be detected, uh, then an infection in the cellulitis stage will resolve more rapidly. The early aggressive surgical treatment was the only method of uh, therapy for infections and was frequently curative for these severe infections in the pre-antibiotic era. It is still the primary method of uh, therapy for serious odontogenic infections. Uh, we must uh, know how to judge the pus formation, the purpose of surgical drainage and incision, and the principles of uh, surgical drainage and incision. Uh, we know there are three stages of odontogenic infections. That is uh, inoculation, edema, cellulitis, and abscess. Uh, the pus uh, formation is diagnosed on the basis of history clinical examination uh, and can be investigated through needle uh, aspiration, ultrasound, and CT scan. Uh, the goal of uh, surgical access uh, to the infection site is to get rid of the body of the toxic uh, um, permanent material. Uh, it will expose the tissues to the aerobic environment, for example, as in case of cellulitis, uh, it will uh, prevent further progression uh, to an abscess with an aerobic bacteria. Uh, and in the case of an established abscess, complete decompression of the fluid collection and uh, exposure of the anaerobic bacteria to an oxygen-rich environment. Uh, for extra oral incision, uh, facial scar and potential vascular and Facial nerve injury must be considered. Uh, basic surgical principles in the management of deep facial space infections of the neck include the creation of an incision uh, that is adequate to perform exploration of all of the involved spaces, drainage of the infection, and uh, drain placement to allow for continued uh, spontaneous drainage of the infection that is dependent drainage. Uh, bluntly dissect uh, through uh, deeper tissues, uh, disruption of the loculation, small clusters of perulus within an abscess cavity uh, that is done by exploring all portions of the abscess. Irrigate the abscess cavity with sterile, normal saline. Uh, place pen rows or corrugated drains or a piece of a uh, sterile glove or a sterilized rubber dam and stabilize it with sutures. Different incisions or approaches are used for extra oral drainage of deep space infections. Uh, note here that the superficial of A, superficial or deep temporal space infections can be drained through this temporal approach. This B, which is in the submandibular area, uh, through this, the sub mental or submandibular space infections can be drain. Similarly, C in the posterior submandibular area is used for the drainage of the submandibular or submesoteric space. Uh, this incision may be used with incision B uh, for through and through drainage of the submental space and with incision A for through and through drainage of the temporal spaces. D is for the lateral pharyngeal or superior portion of the retropharyngeal space. Uh, e is for the retropharyngeal space or carotid sheet. This incision may also combine with the incision uh, D. Although odontogenic infections must be managed with surgery, certain situations benefit from adjunctive antibiotic therapy such as immunocompromised patients and in severe infections. Uh, the clinician should never assume antibiotics are required for appropriately managing odontogenic infections. Therefore, it must be clearly understood that antibiotics should always be regarded as an adjunct to not a substitute for surgical management. Once appropriate surgical management source control and drainage with or without antibiotic therapy has been provided, the patient must be carefully followed up for appropriate clinical response. The typical follow-up period is two to three days after surgical treatment at this time and appropriately responding patient will 
have significant improvement of pain and swelling and overall wellness. If the patient has persistent swelling, pain, drainage, and even a constitutional symptoms, the clinician should carefully assess the cause of the inadequate clinical response. Uh, we have explained the reasons for treatment failure in our video about principle 8, uh, evaluate patient frequently. Surgical exposure uh, and exploration of all involved spaces, establishment of the drainage of infection and removal of the etiological source of infection, that is tooth, tumor, fracture, foreign body are of paramount importance in management and co-medical management with antimicrobial coverage is considered adjunctive therapy. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.